All right, so let's start with my favorite chapter. I have two favorites. I couldn't pick just one. In fact, the whole book is my favorite, but one that really stands out to me is our chapter on acne. And why mm -hmm. this is such a personal favorite of mine is that acne is something I struggled with in my teens, in my 20s. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't until I discovered Paula's Choice and started working here that I realized what I was doing wrong and what I should be doing right. So yeah. for me, this is a life-changing chapter because if you haven't understood what you're doing wrong, such as trying to dry out a pimple with irritating drying ingredients like alcohol, that's exactly what I used to do. I had oily skin and acne prone skin and I thought I could dry a pimple out. Right. So learning just basic fundamentals such as that and then getting into the more nitty gritty details of really what you can do when you know skincare treatments over the counter aren't working going to those bigger measures yes it's an all-encompassing chapter um, another really important thing that this chapter exudes is certain myths that we think that a product if it feels cooling or tingling on our skin yeah that's you a think big one. that's working it's busting beauty myths like that that's mm -hmm. really going to be a game changer for a lot of people and i can't wait for girls in their teens and guys in their teens to read this chapter and be able to go back to school with confidence. And, you know, women who maybe never had a breakout before, but they got pregnant and all of a sudden their skin freaks out. Just yeah. weird things yeah. that can happen. And this chapter also helps break down why it can happen, the different yeah. hormonal changes that can affect your skin. So to me, that's a really, uh, really special chapter to me. And then my other favorite would be our makeup chapter. So we collaborated with celebrity makeup artists, famous makeup artists from all over the all world. All over the world, yeah. Uh, we worked with Trendy King, Tiffany Lowry, Sarah Tamer, Michael Brown from Australia, Max May, Wayne, Wayne Goss. Goss. So we've got some- Hi Wayne, if you're watching. <laughs> we've got some really seasoned pros behind us in this book. And when we collaborated with them, one of the things I asked was, I want to know the tips that we don't read in the magazines every single day. Again and again and I again I want the tips again. that your clients, when you've used them on them, when the, you've used these tricks and techniques, ones that they really said, wow, I never knew that. That made such a huge difference. Yeah. So we've got a ton of those in the book. We also combine that with your experience, Paula's experience, mm -hmm. my experience, and really added in. Yeah, this isn't just good lighting. <laughs> And added in those tips that we've really found have worked over the years and debunking a few that don't. Certain things like when you read to use an uh, under eye concealer that's two shades lighter than your skin tone. And then their foundation, don't do it, right. don't do it. If you're mm -hmm. a well seasoned makeup artist, you might be able to do that. And but, make it look, can make it look convincing. Right, but for the rest of us on an average every day, things, tricks like that just don't work. So um, it's a really fun chapter. I'm excited for everyone to read it. And beyond that, mm. it's also just a good reminder. There were things in this that I took away that certain tips I just kind of forgotten about. Like one of them was to apply a matte lip liner all over your lips and then put your lipstick over it to mm -hmm. help your lipstick stay on longer. Give it an anchor. I've heard that tip, you know, I'm sure I've heard it several times before, yeah. but it's just one of those good memory joggers to get yourself to practice it again and Right. Once again, I learned, oh yeah, that really works. That helps. That helps yep. a lot. So those are a couple of my favorites. How about you? I well, definitely will have a couple chapters I wanted to call out. But before that, I wanted to point out that this book isn't huge. Right. We cover a huge range of topics, but one of the things that we strive to do, and I, I know that we succeeded, is that we really worked hard to distill complex information about various skin disorders, skin type, uh, skin concerns into um, a, what I would call a more digestible book. People aren't sitting down with large volumes of book and you know, you kind of want to get right to the point and get, okay, here's what this is, here's what you can do. And then the last part is, here's what the research has shown to be true. Mm -hmm. And so even though, is it actually a chapter? Let me just the double check. Yeah. Okay, it's not. Okay, so we have this bibliography at the back of the book. No one's going to read this word for word uh, except us when we had to proofread. But one of the things that I was just incredibly proud of when this book went to bed, so to speak, is that we pride ourselves on the research. 
we don't write anything about how to take the best possible care of your skin without consulting the published research. Right. And that was, and to some extent, the lion's share of the time that goes into a book like this because we revisited the research for pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. The information in this book is supported by over 800 studies. 800 studies. So. To the naysayers out there who think we don't know what we're talking about or who think that we just make this stuff up, it's just our opinion, what do they know, go ahead and take a look at the research because that is exactly what we do. It's how we come to our conclusions and, and it's why this beauty book, among all the other beauty books, is so drastically different. Mm -hmm. So I'll get off my soapbox. Um, I'll take one quick question yeah. before we go to that. Eva on YouTube wants to know, will the chapter on acne discuss how your diet can aggravate acne? And the answer is yes, that's included in we there. Thought we'd, we'd absolutely thought of that. Um, my, one of my favorite chapters, um, and this isn't too surprising because I, I love the research, is our Cosmetic Ingredient Dictionary. Now, some of you may know that we have a Cosmetic Ingredient Dictionary uh, as part of the Expert Advice section of paulastrice.com. What we did for the book was that rather than include every single term, we condensed it down to the ingredients that show up the most in cosmetic products, as well as the ingredients that have the most buzz, like Controversial pet. ingredients. Both, both for, for, for good and bad. So mm -hmm. there's a more in-depth discussion about hyaluronic acid, about niacinamide, about retinol, about peptides. Those are all good ingredients that there really isn't, you, it's hard to find bad research about hyaluronic acid, for example. And we really discuss those more in depth too, so that you can make a more informed decision. We didn't take the stance of, you know, this ingredient is, is everyone should be using this to skin. But we also included those controversial ingredients, the ones that you may have seen emails about, and here are the dirty dozen, and here's what you should avoid, and, and we really discussed those more in depth too, so that you can make a more informed decision. We didn't take the stance of, you know, this ingredient is, is everyone should be using this ingredient no matter what, and here's the research that says it's safe. We present the facts as they currently exist, and then you can make up your own mind. That is a much better approach in our estimation than relying on um, misleading or half-hearted or just, yeah. just that misinformation that is so rampant out there. So I really kept in mind, how can we present all of this information in, a, in the most straightforward manner possible? So it's confusing enough out there as a consumer trying to figure out what to use. Mm -hmm. And we have more resources than ever to help us make a decision. But I also think to some extent that more of us uh, are suffering from what's been called indecision paralysis. Yes. There's just so much information and you don't know who to believe and you just can't make up your mind. You, so you just don't use anything. Which this isn't will help, help guide you to the right yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. So I am very proud of our Cosmetic Ingredient Dictionary in this book. And I also like chapter 12, which is about special skin problems, uh, those issues that many people struggle with, rosacea, eczema, um, brow psoriasis. A little bit of information about- Did you already about... say keratosis pilaris? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. Keratosis pilaris, AKA chicken skin. So I think that the information that precedes it about skin type and skin concerns as it relates to acne and aging uh, is, is of course, that's, that's wonderful, but those special skin problems that, that aren't necessarily as easy to solve And that with a lot of care. us actually have, and sometimes you don't realize it. Right. People don't know what keratosis pilaris is. Right. And once they know what it is, and once they realize they can get rid of it, those little red bumps, stuff like that can really open up your eyes to a whole new game. Exactly, exactly. So um, if you can't tell, we're very proud of this book. Um, we wrote it for you guys. We wrote it because it is a distillation of what we're passionate about and, and what we love sharing with you. Uh, I think it really is what makes us different, uh, us being Paula's Choice as a company. There are a lot of companies out there that are formulating great skincare products, great makeup products. We're the only one I know of that's giving you those great products as well as the information that you need to take the best possible care of your skin. And it's information supported by over 800 studies. And we're always looking at the research. It doesn't stop with this book. No, that's the truth.